I praise you for that. Lord God, I just thank you that who you were yesterday is who you are today. Lord God, we just ask you that you'd have your way in this word today. Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you'd anoint our teachers today. Anoint Sister Miranda. Anoint Sister Mary to teach our children and young people. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Uh, as I mentioned, uh, remember tonight, come expecting a wonderful time in the Lord. If you are a Christian and you find yourself struggling, uh, whether it be with sin or a habit, you don't want to miss tonight. You say you can be a Christian and still struggle with sins and habits. You better believe so. Amen. Just because you get saved don't mean you're perfect. Hello. Amen. You are under construction. You are a work in progress. Amen. God's not finished with you yet. But uh, one day, whenever the rapture takes place, we shall be changed. Amen. And uh, even right now, God is in, the, is in the work of molding you and shaping you. But uh, I believe God's going to use tonight's word to really help you. I'm going to talk about that struggle between the flesh and the spirit tonight. And uh, if, you're, if you find yourself struggling... Because how many of you know what it's like to struggle? Yeah. Amen. You, you don't want to miss tonight. It's going to help you. It's going to equip you. Amen. Amen. So remember tonight at 5, uh, come expecting a wonderful time in the Lord. And also, of course, our VBS that is coming up, our Vacation Bible School. We're going to be talking. It'll be a sports theme. But, of course, every message is going to be uh, revolving around a sports theme. But it's to reach our young people. Uh, that'll start on a Wednesday night, and I need your help. I want us to treat this thing like a revival, because God's going to move in our young people. Amen. God's going to move in our young people. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be doing that. Amen. Amen. I've been praying, asking God to move on their behalf. And uh, I got the first night talking about uh, how we got to get the rebound. And there's a lot of young people who have made shots or attempted shots in their life, but they missed it. And now what they do with their life, uh, they, they've got to get the rebound. Amen. You've got to position yourself to get the rebound. You've got to box the enemy out. And, uh, you know, you've got to bend your knees. Amen. To get that rebound. You've got to stick your hands up to get the rebound. A lot of different things that go into rebounding. How many of you know that the devil says just give up and quit, but God says you've got to go for the rebound. Amen. You've got to keep going. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Don't be a quitter. Amen. But, but keep on going. Amen. So, Remember our VBS, uh, I, I, we're going to have a meeting, I thought it was be tonight, but we're going to do it next Sunday night because then it's a little closer to it, but uh, we're just going to need everybody's help I mean, uh, uh, because there's going to be a lot of young people coming and we're going to need mostly just adult supervision, all right? Man, adult supervision. You say, well, how can I help? You can be a supervisor. Watch these young people. But these messages that I'm going to be preaching, they're not just going to help our young people. They're going to help our adults. They're going to help our seniors. You guys going to help everybody. How many you know that the gospel is not just bound to young people or old people or middle-aged people? It touches all ages. Can you say amen? So do remember those announcements. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me uh, to the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number 5, starting verse number 7. Amen. Romans 5 and verse number 7. Amen. I won't preach what the Lord has laid upon my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh yeah, Bible study, Wednesday night, 6.30, John 10. Amen. Moving right along. I'm always excited to start another chapter. Amen. Romans 5 and verse number 7. If you get there, shout amen. 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 For scarcely, in other words, it's very rare. Scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth, or he demonstrated, his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that something? That while you were still in sin, Jesus died for you. 
He saw you in your absolute worst, and he willingly went to the cross to redeem you for every wicked and evil thing you've ever done. Amen. Thank God that he died for you. Amen. Amen. Verse number nine. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Say blood. Blood. Justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Thank God. Saved by wrath. Not through yourself or your works, your efforts. We're saved by the wrath of God through Jesus Christ. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. Saved by the life of Jesus. With the help of the Holy Ghost this morning, I'd like to minister for a moment or two just upon the thought of he died so that I could live. Amen. He died so that I could live. Amen. Amen. He died so that I could live. Last Wednesday night, I requested prayer for a woman who had recently been put on life support. And I appreciate uh, everyone that helped to pray for her. And she went to bed last Friday night with no health complications whatsoever and uh, but her fiance woke up in the middle of the night and he looked at her and he found that she was unconscious and unresponsive he called 911 and the EMTs came and they picked her up they immediately placed the young woman on life support they had her on life support for a couple of days but Tragically, she ended up passing away just a couple days later. And uh, she was only, I believe, in her mid to late 30s, I believe. But after her passing, the family discovered that she was an organ donor. And uh, although it was a tragic, tragic, life shattering event, there were five people that are alive this morning because she died and she donated her organs to other people. She died but because of her death five other people this morning are alive. Amen. What a picture. What a type of what Jesus Christ did for you and for me, can you say amen? Due to sin, we were all on a spiritual deathbed, just moments away from an eternity in a place called hell. But yet Jesus died that you and I could live. Hallelujah. Jesus died so you could live. Jesus died so that the drug addict could live. Jesus died that the alcoholic could live. Jesus died that the pervert could live. Jesus died that the drunkard could live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died for you. Can you say amen? For the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We all deserve death. We all deserve to spend an eternity, an eternity separated from a holy God in a terrible place called hell. But Jesus died so that you Number one this morning, I want to tell you that Jesus died so that I could have peace with God. Amen. Jesus died so that I and you could have peace with God. How did Jesus bring us peace with God? He did so through the shedding of his own blood. Colossians 1 verse number 20 said, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. You see, there's a whole lot of people here in this world, maybe even 
here in church today that do not have peace with God. They try and search all around to find peace. Maybe I can find peace in a, another friend. Maybe I can find peace in another relationship. Maybe I can find peace in a new house, a new car, a new job, a new this or a new that. But yet there is never that contentment. There is never that satisfying peace that comes to their heart and mind. Why is that? Because outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, no man, woman, boy, or girl can ever know what true peace is. Can you say amen? It is impossible. I said it is impossible to have real peace unless you first know Jesus Christ. If you want peace in your mind, you've got to have peace with God. Amen. If you want peace in your mind, you must have peace with God. Amen. Peace has been made available and it was made available whenever Jesus stretched out his arms wide on the old rugged cross. John 3, 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Many people today have a misunderstanding as to who Jesus is and what Jesus came to do. Some people say that Jesus was nothing more than a mere man. Some people say that Jesus was nothing but a prophet. But let me tell you who Jesus Christ is. Let me tell you who he was. Amen. He was and he is the son of the living God. He is the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. If you want to give God praise, you've got to give Jesus praise. Amen. Because Jesus thought it not robbery to make himself equal with God. Amen. Oh, the Bible says in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. John 1 and 3 says all things were made by him. By who? By the word. By Jesus. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. Jesus is God. Jesus was God. And Jesus all will, always will be God. What did Jesus come to this earth to do? Jesus himself told us in Luke 19 verse number 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. How many of you remember whenever you were lost in sin? How many of you remember the day, whenever the days in which you would go and you were chasing after the world? You were chasing after the temporal. You were chasing after something that would try to quench the spiritual thirst that you had. But nothing ever helped. It only brought a temporal satisfaction. Maybe you were lost in drugs. Maybe you were lost in perversion. Maybe you were lost uh, in sin and filth and every immoral thing that you can ever think of. Maybe you were lost in homosexuality. Maybe you were lost in lesbianism. Maybe you were lost in any old wicked thing in this world. But one day you felt God tugging at your heart and God began to convict you. What was he doing? He was seeking you. Amen. He was looking for you. He was actively searching for you. Why? To beat you up? No, no, no. To condemn you? No, no, no. To just spit upon you? No, no, no. He came to see and to save that which was a lie. Jesus said, I am come to condemn. I come to save. Can you say amen this morning? Jesus is not sitting up in heaven happily awaiting to judge this world. Jesus is not up in heaven saying, I cannot wait to judge the sinner. But Jesus stands with open arms and he says, peace has been made available between you and me. Christ shed his blood to purchase your peace with God. You don't have to be afraid of God anymore. You don't have to be afraid of the judgment of God that is to come upon this earth. You don't got to be afraid of a place called hell anymore. As long as you will accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hell is real. Judgment is coming upon this wicked world. But you've got time right now to make your heart right with God. You've got time right now to sprinkle your mind, to sprinkle your heart with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Can you lift up your hands this morning 
I'm telling you, he died for you. I said he died for you. Oh, nobody else died for you. But Jesus died for you. Can you say amen this morning? Peace is available for you and I. Amen. Jesus took your punishment. You deserve to be on that cross. Jesus paid the price for your sin. You couldn't have ever afforded to pay the price for your sin. Sadly, there's a lot of people that are just like that. I was listening to uh, sports radio the other day, and a man said, uh, I like listening to the man as far as sports, but sometimes he kind of drifts off, starts talking about other things. And, and the man said, I'm not sure if there is a God, but if there is a God, I hope I've done enough good uh, to get to heaven one day. And I'm I thought, oh, sir, I'm so sorry that that's the way you're thinking it. I'll tell you, you can have all the goods you have in this world, and you can give them to the poor, and you're still, you're still going to be a dirty, filthy, rotten sinner in the eyes of a holy God. Can you say that? I can sell my house. I can get all my proceeds and just give them to the church. If you don't know Jesus, that ain't going to amount to a hill of beans. Can you say, amen? I can go and I can sacrifice my life. Well, I can do this, but if you don't know Jesus, it doesn't matter anything. Can you say amen? There's only one way to get to heaven, and that way is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father unless he comes through me. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, or 2, Ephesians 2, 6 through 8, I believe it is, or maybe it's 8 to 10. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, not a word. Why? Lest any man should you can't save yourself. I can't save you. This church can't save you. There's only one that's able to save you. His name is Jesus. How do I know who he is? Look at the one with nail pierced hand. Look at the one with the nail pierced feet. Look at the one with the spirit in his side. Look at the one with the crown of thorns upon his head. Look at the one that said, Let there be light. And there was light. Look at the one they put in the tomb. And on the third
God. Jesus died so that I could live. Number two, I want to tell you that Jesus died so that I can live eternally with him. Amen. Jesus died so that you and I could live eternally with God. For God so loved the world. How do I know God loved me? Look at Jesus. For God so loved the world. He loved every single sinner. For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died so we can live eternally with him. One day every single one of us will live eternally in either heaven or hell. That's the choice. There's no purgatory, no ceasing to exist as the Jehovah Witnesses teach. Uh, no purgatory as, as, as Catholicism teaches. No, 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 no. It's either heaven or hell. The Bible says it's appointed unto a man once to die and after that, the judgment. John 3.36 says this. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. How do I know I have everlasting life? If you believe on the Son, how do I know I believe and you put your faith in the Son of God? And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Oh, what a tragic thing for a sinner. They can live this life, maybe even be over a hundred years old. But if they don't know Jesus, all it is is that wrath is abiding on them and it's getting closer and closer and closer to consuming them. But I don't know about you this morning. I don't have wrath that awaits me. I've got the love of Jesus that awaits me. I've got streets of gold that await me. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop that awaits me. Hey, Amen. Oh, I've got a place, a land where all tears are wiped away. I've got a land where there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more death. Neither is there sorrow, no more tear. That's where I'm headed. Not because of anything I've done, but because I've simply placed my faith in the one who paid the price for me. What happens once an individual takes their last breath? Well, one of two things happen. It depends. For a child of God, whenever they close their eyes and breathe their last breath here on this earth, they immediately, not 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, an hour, they immediately wake up in the presence of Jesus. How many got a loved one? They went home, amen? Oh, you were crying, huh? That, that hurt, huh? Yeah, it hurts because we're separated from them. They don't cease to exist by any means, but but here on this earth, it's gone. I'm, I'm separate. I'm hurting. Oh, but they close their eyes here and they wake up in the presence of Almighty God. Oh, that's what the Bible says. Precious in the sight of the Lord, not in your sight, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. Amen. For a child of God, they immediately wake up in the presence of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says we are confident. Oh, you can be confident where your loved one is if they knew Jesus. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. There is just a step between us and death. David said, oh, but there is a step. We will either step right on into heaven or we'll step right on down to a place called hell. One of the two. That's it. But what happens to an individual who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? They immediately wake up in a place called hell. After death, eternity begins. And it never stops. How long is eternity? Forever. <laughs> it never Ceases. It never stops. A million years could pass in hell and it would just be starting. A million years could pass in hell and yet you would just be starting 
It never ends. That's what the Bible says today. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Amen. I saw a pastor one time. Let me see here. Oh, sure enough, that's what I get for not wearing ties. <laughs> Let me see here. I need, uh, anybody got a tie on? No, we don't believe in ties in this church. I guess. <laughs> hey, we need to be even paying them. <laughs> here we go. I'm used to this. Glory to God. Amen. All right. What's going on? There we go. All right. Cool. This will work. All right. Let me see here. Anybody have an ink pen? Yeah. Y'all don't think I'm getting distracted or off track. I'm not. You're, you're still on track. Anybody got a pen? Yeah. Mr. Marlene, thank you. All right. Here we go. Go. All right. No, that's right. Okay. Let's try to make it dark so everybody can see it. Okay. <laughs> Y'all see this? Here you go, Marlon. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, Marlon. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> She's got spiritual eyesight. Amen. And what's better, physical or spiritual? Spiritual. Amen. We learned that on Wednesday, huh? Amen. See this little line right here? So tiny. Can you see that, Sister Pat? No. <laughs> okay. I'm going to come real close to everybody. You see that little line I drew on there with the pen? Little, tiny little line. Right, Dave? You see it? Yeah. All right. I don't need to whack you with it. No. Y'all okay. see this little tiny line? What if this line right here represented your entire lifetime? One to a hundred. Say you live to be a hundred years old. Even though that's very rare. Most, 75. 90 years old. Here you go. Here's your whole life right here. This little time span. And this is eternity. But it keeps going. <laughs> and it keeps going. It never ends. When a whole lifetime of your life has gone by, hell is just starting. The good news is this. When an entire lifetime passes away in the presence of Jesus, it's just beginning. Amen. Can we lift up our hands unto the Lord, Lord? Thank you for heaven, Lord. Thank you for a place where there's no more death, neither sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. Why? Because we'll be in the presence of Jesus. Hell is a place that is eternal. It's a place where the flames burn hot day and night. It's a place where you do not burn up nor, nor disintegrate, but you'll always be able to feel its torment. Jesus said that hell is a place where its smoke ascends up forever and ever. It's a place of torment. It's a place of weeping. It's a place of gnashing of teeth. It is a place of regret. This is one of the most terrible things of hell is that it is a place of regret. Why is that so terrible? Because everyone in hell will realize I'm only here because I ignored Jesus Christ. I don't have to be here. God didn't create me to be here, but I chose to be here. And after a million lifetimes go by, I'm just beginning. That's how real hell is. Anybody ever have a bad dream before? Yeah. May you wake up and... Huh? I've had dreams like that before. Amen. You wake up though and you go, thank God that wasn't real. Amen. We can imagine in hell. You think, oh, it's just a bad dream. It'll end. But it never ends. It continues on on and on and on. Well, if God is a God of love, how could he ever send someone to hell? God doesn't send anyone to hell. You send yourself by walking over his blood. He came and he paved the way that you don't have to go there. If you end up in there, you chose to go there. Right now,
now there are people in hell regretting the fact that they rejected Jesus Christ. Jesus did not die upon the cross so that you can live separated from him for all eternity. But Jesus died that you can live together with him and with your loved ones for all eternity. He died so you can live eternally with him. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. I love this scripture about heaven. It says, but I, as it is written, I have not seen nor you heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. How many of you love Jesus this morning? Oh, you can't even imagine the glorious things that God has prepared for you. Can you say amen this morning? I do not deserve heaven. You do not deserve heaven. I don't deserve to spend an eternity with God. Neither do you. But God died. God sent his only son Jesus to die so that we could live eternally with him. He died so I could live. And the last thing this morning, I want to tell you that Jesus died so that you could receive him today. Amen. Jesus died so that you could receive him today. Let me ask you a question. Just think in your own heart. What's stopping you from receiving Christ? What is keeping you? What's hindering you from receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior? He died so that you could live. If a man was laying there about to get the lethal injection and a man came in and he said, huh, I want to die in his place. What would keep you on that table? Think about it. Jesus said, I took your punishment. What are you doing there? I made a way when there wasn't a way before. I died so that you could live. What's keeping you from receiving him? I want to tell you this morning that hell is filled with people right now that are saying, please listen to Brother William today. Amen. Amen. I believe hell could listen in to this message today. And they'd be saying, they'd be screaming, amen. I believe that. Eternity is real. Some today in hell would be able to say, don't let pride keep you from receiving Jesus. Pride. I want to protect my reputation. I don't want people to know that there's something deep in my heart against God. I don't want people to know that. Pride keeps many people from responding to Jesus. Well, I don't want to admit that I was a sinner in need of God. Don't let pride send you to an eternity in a place called hell. We spend our whole lives even, I was talking to Brother Charlie before church and and I, I was telling him, I said, well, I lived in the last house that I did for 10 years. And Charlie said, well, you'll live in this next, your new house for a lot longer. And then I thought, yeah, I'll do that. And then I may sell it. I may do this or I do that. If all my life was only 80 to 90 years, how long is that in spite of an eternity? You're willing to spend an eternity. I'll tell you, spending one day in hell wouldn't be worth it. But to spend an eternity, an unending amount of days, unending amount of days. How long is eternity? If you were to get every little speck of sand and it represented a million years, <laughs> that'd give you a good idea. But once you used every speck, it would start over again. Hell is real. Heaven is real. And it's your choice. Amen. Amen. My choice. Your choice. Jesus made a way where we can have that choice. Thank God. Some people are in hell because of pride. Let me share this story. I feel it again. Growing up, there was a man in the church named R.L. Greg. Sister Lena, you remember Brother R.L.? Yeah. He had fingernails. Seemed like this long. <laughs> Creepy fingernails. <laughs> he did. 
R.L. would, he had butterscotch candy. He'd put them within those fingernails. You want a candy, William? <laughs> Get a candy. We always called him Brother R.L. He was a grouchy man. He was. He, some people are nice, but they just grouchy. You know, how many people know people like that? They're nice, but they grouchy. <laughs> anyway, one day, R.L., Dad is preaching a message similar to this about eternity, heaven and hell. And R.L., is, his name was R.L., he's... He's sitting in the crowd and he's listening to my dad preach. And my dad's thinking, I don't know why the Lord even gave me this message today. Sure enough, the altar call comes and here comes R.L. to the front. And dad says, R.L. was a deacon. He was a leader of the church. R.L. comes forward. Dad said, Brother R.L., what, what do you need prayer about today? Are you sick in body or are you not feeling well? These were his words. I've been playing games. I don't know Jesus. But today I want to know him. For years he let pride. He had a good reputation. But he let pride keep him from responding to God. Six months later, R.L. went into eternity. How close was he? To spending an eternity in hell. But he said, I'm not going to let pride rob me of eternal life. You don't know how much longer you go on this earth. Amen. I don't know how much longer I have on this earth. I'm praying I got a long, long time. Old song says, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. That's true, huh, Uncle Ray? <laughs> Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I'm not getting in line. I'm looking for the rapture. That's Amen. what I'm looking for. Amen. I believe that. But I know there's a lot of other people believe it too, but hey, they've got the signs we got. Amen. I'm looking forward to the sound of the trumpet. But if God should choose to take me by way of the grave, I'm going to wake up in the presence of God. And if I had a chance to come back, I wouldn't. Amen. Kind of like, let me share that. Brother Andy, would you come to the piano? That way I know not to go too much longer. My house on Barnett Street in Oldell. Why I love that house. Oh, I loved it. I told Randy, I'm going to die here one day. Amen. Plumbing was bad. <laughs> Always had all kinds of problems. Had hardwood floors, the original ones, so the noise was so loud in that house. And uh, see why I'm going ball back here? Is all that all that noise and hollering in the house? Stress. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna die in this house. I love this house. I just live down the street from Brother Dave. <laughs> but you know what? Eventually, after we moved into our new house, I don't have any desire whatsoever <laughs> to go back to that house on Barnett. You know why? Because I've experienced something greater, if you will. <laughs> I like having a bigger house where it's not as noisy. <laughs> I like having carpet and not just the hardwood floors. The other day I was just thinking about that. And the Lord said this to me. He said, you were in love with that house. You didn't even realize I had something greater for you. He said, there's a lot of people in love with the pleasures of this life. But they don't even realize I've got something that far exceeds anything they can imagine or comprehend. I have not seen, ear has not heard, no mind has comprehended the things that God has prepared for them that love Him. With every head bowed, all the eyes closed this morning. With nobody looking around,
you here today and you say, Pastor William, I don't know if I'm ready to meet Jesus. But today I want to be sure. You can know. You can be sure. We don't live by feeling. We live by what the Word of God says. You can know today, I'm ready for heaven. I'm not worried about eternity. If you're here and you say, I don't want to worry about, I want to know I'm ready. Would you just make your way up here this morning? You say, make your way up here. Yeah, because if we won't, if, we, if we're ashamed of God before church people, we're going to be ashamed of God before this world. I'll tell you. You want to say, I want to know I'm ready. You can know today. Eternity is long. Don't let pride rob you. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, my heart has been broken. I've got loved ones that are in heaven and I'm hurting. I've got good news. There can be a reunion. As long as you're ready to go. Amen. As long as you're ready. How do I know I'm ready? If we confess our sins unto Him, 1 John 1 and 9, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my life. Wash me in your blood. I believe you're the Son of God. You died and you rose again. You're coming back. I receive you. Oh, praise the Lord. Can we all find a place to pray this morning? You can pray at the altar. You can pray at your seat. It really doesn't matter. Let's just take some time to talk with God today. Hallelujah. Yeah, God's song. Oh, perfect song. Thank you, Jesus. And could find.
We love you today. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on an old rugged cross to redeem us and to forgive us of our sins. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, the Bible says greater love has no man with this than a man will lay down his life for his friends. He died for you. That you can live. Oh, how do you, how do you, how do you receive him? How do you receive the gift? Just stretch out your hands and receive it, don't you? Same way you receive Christ, you just say, Jesus, here I am. I need you. There he is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You love the Lord today. Amen. Do you realize how valuable you are? Amen. You, Jesus paid a high price for you. The world may not think nothing of you. You may not even think that much of yourself. But Jesus thought the world of you. He said, I'm going to die so that they can live. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember tonight, 5 o'clock, come expecting a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. Once again, it was so good to see everyone here today. So good to see Sister Jonelle again. Amen. We, we just pray the blessing of the Lord upon you, Sister Jodell. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we just love you. And once again, we thank you for your spirit here today. We thank you for your word. I ask you, Lord, that as we go our separate ways, that you would just lead us and guide us, be with us. Lord God, just bring us back tonight at 5, ready to worship and praise your holy name. Jesus' name, when the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Love you.